Senate should note with great concern the report in the Daily Trust newspaper of the 1st of May 2019 on how one citizen of Nigeria, Zainab Ali, was arrested by Saudi drug law enforcement agents on allegation of drug trafficking. That the Senate should be aware that similar as our reporters reported, quoting the Chief Secretary of the San Francisco State Government on the 18th of June 2019. On the effort of the governor to meet with officials of the same Saudi Arabia government to discuss way forward the release of another Nigerian, which is Safarabon Alarama Ibrahim, who has been in tension for almost two years of our alleged drug trafficking, whose arrest followed a frame up initiated from Mala Mamin Kano International Airport from the findings according to the report. The Senate should further be informed that there are several other incidents of arrest of innocent Nigerian citizens by Saudi government and other countries on similar allegations of drug trafficking. The Senate should be worried that these innocent citizens are just victims of circumstances, as many of these distasteful dispersions will have been curtailed by the for security lapses at our airport, inflated by drug syndicates with easy access to plant illicit drugs on innocent travelers on their belongings without their knowledge. The Senate should appreciate that Senator Zainab Aliyu and two other Nigerian citizens were saved from execution by the Saudi government due to the prompt intervention of the Nigerian government after investigation proof they had no knowledge of the drugs in their luggage. The Senate should be aware that the Federal Airport Authorities of Nigeria, the National Drug Law Environment Agency, the Nigerian Police, the Nigerian Customs Service, the Nigerian Immigration Service, and several other aviation security personnel are responsible for the security of our airports. Sadly, some of the staff of these agencies may not be exonerated for the relation of their duties and making our airport unsafe. Mr. President, our hearts bled when we saw the ordeals. The, this young girl that went innocently accompanied the mother and went for Hajj in Saudi Arabia and was mentally tortured beyond imagination for no fault of hers. Mr. President, Nigerians felt so bad and joined the family, the hard-working father that worked tirelessly to interrogate the security agencies at the airport, resulting that we found out what actually happened. And uh, this young lady was released. And another young man also followed. Mr. President, the situation at the airport is something that caused all of us a source of concern and worry. Because each time people travel out of this country, going out of the country or coming in, you can differentiate the baggage of Nigerians by the way they are bandaged before coming back to the country. You see other people, travelers who are traveling, they just go with their luggages and check in and go their way. But when Nigerians are coming, coming back anywhere they went, they have to bring to, to wrap and unwrap uh, their, their luggages because of fear of what will happen to their uh, their, to their baggages when they come back to the airport here. Yeah. When we are also moving out of the country here, yeah, you almost want to follow your baggage inside that most people don't even want to uh, go, go with uh, 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 several baggages because of fear of what will happen to their uh, their They go with only hang luggages. Mr. President, we, the, the cost of putting security agencies is not rocket science. It doesn't take much. We need to put effective CCTVs, like I suggested here, and get the, the manpower to make sure that these CCTVs are used. By so doing, we are going to curtail this uh, trouble, which, most, uh, which uh, this embarrassment, which we are going through on a daily, on, on daily basis, and making Nigerians uh, to, uh, to help uh, travelers who are coming to this country or traveling out feel bad about our country. If we do so, Mr. President, is going to help this world. I thank you so much for that. Considering the international embarrassment 
that this country faces every day. And also the sufferings that innocent Nigerians go through through the unpatriotic activities and criminal activities of some people that are working in our airports. These people capitalize on the security lapses in our airports by bringing in activities that are detrimental to the corporate existence of this country, that are detrimental to our people. Therefore, Mr. President, we need to look at these lapses, rearrange our airports, reconfigure our airports, bring in equipments and gadgets that you find in other climbs, in other cli airports, in other climbs in the world. So that what these people are capitalizing on to create image problem for this country would henceforth, henceforth be stopped. I want to align myself to this motion and its contents in total. But while I was reading the motion, because it touches on security, my mind went to seaports. Airports are not the only places that crimes and all these things happen. The seaports are also very, very porous. What happens at the airports happens at the seaport and even happens worse at the seaport because at the seaport, people go away and come. Goods travel, many things go. And these CCTV cameras are not there. At our airports or our ports of entrance, we as VIP must lead by example. I've had situation where I traveled with a VIP here. At the airport here, when he was asked to remove his shoes, hair was let loose at the airport. But when we got to Germany, that VIP was the first person who removed his shoe, removed his belt. I even was holding his trouser because it was dropping. <laughs> Mr. President, we cannot just be pushing this to security agencies alone. If we get at the airport as a senator or as a governor or as a minister, and we lead by example, of course that security agent who is there knows that if he does anything otherwise, of course, the law will catch up with him. But when we walk in as VIP at the airport and we refuse to be checked, and you expect that same security agent now to check the common Nigerian, he will not do it. Of course, he will collect something and move ahead. So Some of the airport staff will leave their work to surround you, to help you, to carry your luggage. And in doing that, they will abandon their primary responsibility at the airport. We have to also help them to do their work and also for us to submit ourselves to scrutiny, submit ourselves to the security at the airport if we want this job to be done and done in such a manner that Nigerians will get the benefits of the people working at the airport. Mr. President, there must be dignity of level. There should, there should be an awareness for dignity of level. Some people, when they get to the airport, they are not even live the kind of life that will conform themselves to the salaries that they receive. Rather, many of them will convert themselves to beggars. When you see them begging, you won't believe that that person is even level 12 or level 14 or level 16 civil servants. I think people should be able to live according to their pockets and live according to their salaries. That will help us also to reduce the kind of embarrassment that we get from Nigerian um, airports. But having said that, Mr. President, I want to also suggest that the cameras at the airport should be looked into to know whether those cameras are really functioning, whether there is situation room, because there should be situation room that, are, that analyzes the recordings of the cameras. Because you can, I remember one that was passing through the um, villa gates. Somebody was asking me for money. I said, oh, can't you see camera? This camera will catch you. He said, madam, please give me. It's not working. So how would the person know that the camera is not working? So are we even sure that the cameras at the airports are working? And if that be the case, what effort have we made to trace back to the day this happened and who was on duty 
and who was in charge. And if people are made to take responsibility, it will serve as a deterrent for further actions. You may blame camera, but even if you put the best of the camera on X, it requires a human being who is willing to take responsibility to manage the camera. I said this because the ugly situation we find ourselves now, we must act quickly to address it. It's not only in fact. You hear a lot of insecurities and bloodletting everywhere, but leaders are refusing to take responsibility. Why I say this, and I would suggest, Mr. President of Senate, that the federal government has been commended on their effort to rescue the people concerned or bringing them back home. I think there's need for them to move a step more to find out what happened. It, the wise action to be taken would have been to find out who was the manager on duty on that day and who are the officers on duty and make them to take responsibility. When this is done, next time, an officer in charge, be it a governor, be it a senator, be it who, must ensure that the proper job is done only to protect himself and his, his job. That as a national assembly, we are not going to allow this case go quietly and disappear or evaporate. We receive briefings, especially from the NDLEA that is in court with five arrested people. Sadly, we are told that the judge granted them bail, which may be a due process. But the most uh, discouraging part of it was that about two of those five left the country. So we insisted they must be brought back. And the case was initially adjourned till June. And we were told adjourned again till July. And we said, no, this case must be completed expeditiously. These people must be set as a very good example of anybody who toys with lives of Nigerians. This is killing people. So many Nigerians would have been executed through a fault of, those, of others and not their own. So this motion is apt, is timely, and this Senate will go ahead to pursue this case to its logical conclusion. I will stop at that, but I want to assure the Senate and indeed the National Assembly and Nigerians that this Senate is ready to ensure that the lives and property of Nigerians are protected. That's why we are here.